Okay, so uh, questions 49 to 54, and it's about the pineal gland. It talks about continuous light, exposure, and the pineal gland decreases. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to, sometimes when, sometimes it helps just to uh, write down uh, basically what's going on. <laughs> so, so uh, as you have increased light, uh, it leads to decreased uh, pineal gland. Okay, um, at the same time, the weight of the ovaries increases, so this leads uh, to uh, increased ovaries, and the length of the estrus cycle shortens, and that goes to decrease um, estrus cycle. So the, the estrus cycle, just by the way, it's a horm hormonal cycle, it's a hormone controlled um, cycle that you know, affects the uh, f female reproduction. Uh, of course, it's it's basically female uh, mammals, and um, the estrus cycle includes uh, a period of heat. Uh, you know, so there's sexual activity during that period of heat. Um, you know, usually it's sexual activity is relegated to that period of heat, and um, and also uh, these mammals um, tend to uh, reabsorb the blood from their endometrium, as opposed to humans who. who can be sexually active uh, at any time of the month. Uh, there is no specific period of heat. Uh, there are certain trends, but but there's no real uh, period of heat, or it's certainly not restricted to any period. And um, and also for humans, um, the blood from the endometrium is shed, so there is a, a menstrual blood flow. It's not uh, resorbed. So, um, but anyway, so we're lo we're looking at the uh, estrus cycle in uh, in this. Uh, mammal and the uh, pineal gland uh, produces the substance melatonin so the pineal gland so we we have to keep in mind that uh, melatonin is produced here and uh, then they show the metabolic pathway and the metabolic pathway for melatonin uh, includes uh, includes serotonin so this is uh, an important part it also includes 5-hydroxytryptophan or 5-HT, but that's not really being discussed. And um, and they mention, you know, or they're underlining the importance of uh, HIOMT as being um, an important uh, rate uh, limiting step. So HIOMT as being a rate uh, limiting step in the uh, production of melatonin. So, and they also mention that melatonin is only uh, produced in the pineal gland, so uh, that's you know also helpful to keep in mind. Um, so there's a note, and it's in uh, it's in bold. Usually that's helpful. And now we're look now I'm looking at uh, figure two, and looking at figure two, we see the control group. We see that in the dark, we have. Um, high levels of uh, HIOMT, so high levels of melatonin, because in the light, we get low levels, so in the dark, we get high levels of, of this. So this is activated by, um, by, by dark, so they're working, they're working opposite to each other. So uh, that makes sense, and then in the light, we see that uh, we go down to a minimum activity of HIOMT, and removal of the pituitary gland seems to do nothing in figure two. And then, um, you know, everything seems to go buck wild uh, with, the, with the pineal gland um, when we have uh, darkness, so darkness, increase of this activity, uh, unlimited. And then uh, when we have disruption of the nerves to the pineal gland. So by disrupting the nerves for the pineal gland, it also leads to increased activity here. So that means that the nerves to the pineal gland must in vivo, meaning in life, in the real organism, must be inhibiting this process. Because when you remove it, then this process goes up. So um, that gives us a little bit uh, of an idea. So the first question, uh, the next uh, question of the following the information provided most strongly suggests that light increases the size of the ovaries mainly by so how does light increase the size of the ovaries mainly by 
uh, what exactly? Well, we know that um, this is going to uh, be related to the reduction in the pineal, reduction in the um, melatonin. So of the following, what most strongly suggests that light increases the size mainly by so we have the first one decreasing the activity of the methoxylating enzyme. So if we look at figure one and we look at the methoxylating enzyme, so this is this. So if we decrease uh, this, we're going to decrease melatonin. So now we, we have a way, instead of saying light directly to this, we have a way of explaining this. It's just that light is going to uh, decrease this. So light decreases this and that leads to decrease in melatonin and perhaps by decreasing uh, the enzymes here and the production of enzymes the pineal gland gets smaller because it becomes less active so um so that's answer choice a which makes uh, perfect sense um and and it's it's completely related to the chart that you know we try to uh, make but increasing the, the length of the estrous cycle or increasing the production of the melatonin, uh, the, these things are running counter to what we know. So question, so answer 49 is A. So question 50, suppose that the experiment uh, summarized in figure two, um, another group of rats had its pineal enzyme production inhibited. So it had this uh, production inhibited. So um, what would we expect? So we would expect that HIOMT would go down. Okay, so we're inhibiting the production of the enzyme. So we're expecting uh, HIOMT activity is going to go down. So um, when, we, when we look at the uh, graph, we look at the control, we see that there's a minimum activity for HIOMT and there's a maximum activity. So because we are expecting this to go down, we expect the maximum activity definitely to be lowered. So that means maximum activity is during the dark, and because we're not making this anymore, because it's been inhibited, we expect lower than maximum activity during the dark. So then we look for that answer, and then answer choice D says less in the dark. It, now, there's only one answer that says less in the dark, so of course I'm going to choose answer choice D. But if it said less in the dark and less in the light, I would probably choose that because whatever the minimum activity is of uh, HIOMT, I mean, I'm not quite sure what the units are for minimum activity. Is it per gram? Is it per mole? Because if uh, the minimum activity is a certain amount, uh, I it depends on what what the units are as to whether or not I would feel that it would go down uh, in the light as well. But the minimum is it definitely assuredly goes down uh, in the dark. And so the answer for 50 is D. Now question 51, according to the information provided so far, I just want an explanation how light increases the size. So now we want, we want an explanation as to how uh, light does this. How does light um, increase the size of the ovary. So we, we need something uh, to, to go for this. And it says light decreases the, and then increases. Okay, so if you look at answer choices A and B, they're in exact opposition to each other, precisely opposites. Now, I would say that more often than not, not always, but more often than not, when there's two answer choices that are exactly opposite, one of them is gonna be the right answer. So, um, so it says light decreases the inhibitory effect. Okay, so now we do realize, okay, that the nerves have an inhibitory effect on HIOMT. And, you know, yeah, so the, the, they have a, in fact, the previous question also talked about an inhibitory effect to the pineal gland, and that's what we worked out. But now, um, this is another question, and we know that the nerves have that because when you disrupt the nerves in figure two, all of a sudden the pineal gland goes wild with production. So it obviously is doing some sort of inhibition. So we, we're looking at increased light decreases the melatonin. So increased light decreases the melatonin. So that means 
increased light must have a positive effect on the nerves which have a negative effect on the pineal gland because the, the nerves inhibit the uh, production for the pineal gland. We know that. So light must affect the nerves in some way in order for that to occur. So that is um, answer choice B. Oh, and there's, uh, there's more uh, fun to be had here. So uh, question uh, 52, um, looking at this, rat pineal glands represents in the noon and midday uh, denervation is the disruption of nerves. So uh, when we look at the um, graph, figure three, um, we notice that there is this variation, this cyclical movement of um, H IOMT activity going up, and when it's up, serotonin's down. So well, I guess we wouldn't be too uh, surprised that if uh, melatonin starts uh, going up, high, high is going up, there's lots of this being made, then serotonin levels are starting to go down. And then when the HIOMT activity is being blocked or it's very, very low, so melatonin is not being made, then serotonin levels start rising. So we can't be too uh, surprised about that. Then we see that the, the area that's in normal lighting, then in continuous darkness, we are not surprised to see that HIOMT levels go very, very high because we saw that in figure two. It did the same thing in figure two. The only thing that's a little surprising or interesting is serotonin levels are still cyclical even though HIOMT levels are very high and being maintained very high. So that's a little different because they're not moving in sync at that level. Then when we go back to normal lighting, they're back in sync according to the same rules or, you know, sort of logic that I just mentioned. And then in continuous lighting, you know, consistent with the graph, because in light you go down to minimal activity for HIOMT. So HIMT activity drops down very low and serotonin levels go up because uh, it's being blocked here. So serotonin starts to accumulate. So that's quite logical. Then in normal lighting, we go back to the cyclical part. And then denervation, we've already seen um, because the nerves seem to um, inhibit uh, HIOMT activity. So when you um, remove those nerves that are supplying the pineal gland, then suddenly HIOMT activity goes crazy. It goes wild, it's very high. And because uh, this is a very high HIOMT activity, so creating a lot of melatonin, then serotonin levels drop. Uh, and so they're very low. So all that is very uh, logical, except for the cyclical part for serotonin levels during continuous darkness. And, um, and everything seems to be consistent uh, with uh, figure two. So then the first question is, which of the following best describes, best describes, okay? Because that means that there might be uh, more than uh, one option that is not too bad, but one is the best. The relationship between figures two and three. So when you look at both of these figures, um, you know, we, we have the first answer choice is similar phenomena and the results are consistent. I, I would say, you know, exactly for the reasons that I mentioned, it's, a, it's similar phenomena. It's, it has to do with light and dark and nerves being uh, uh, being interrupted. And um, the results are quite consistent. You know, there is that problem with the cyclical part, the continuous darkness. But besides that, everything else uh, is quite consistent. So I think that's the best of these other things because you can't say that they're inconsistent with each other because they're mostly consistent. And you can't say that this is about different phenomena. This is about darkness, light, uh, HIOMT activity, serotonin levels, it's very much about the same phenomena. So 52 is A. And then uh, 53, which of the following statements is most consistent with the figures? Um, let's see, so uh, continuous lighting overcomes the effect of HIOMT activity. So continuous lighting, well, we can see what effect continuous lighting has, HIOMT activity drops down. And we can see the effect the innervation has, HIOMT activity goes very high. Now, does one overcome the other? 
I would be very interested to see that study, <laughs> but we don't see it. We don't have a trial that has both of them, so we don't know whether or not that would happen. And then antitrust B, continuous lighting overcomes the effect again. So maybe, possibly, perhaps, <laughs> I, but we don't know. We need to see the trial to know that because the question is, which of the following is most consistent with the figures, and, and we don't have that. Then we have continuous darkness, Okay, so we look at that part of the graph, overcomes the effect internally generated brain rhythms. So brain rhythms, rhythm would make, make you think of up and down, a cycle is a rhythm, something like that. So darkness overcomes that cycling effect on HIMT activity. And indeed we see that because, because in the darkness, we see that the graph is just high and stable and constant. So it's not doing any rhythmic uh, motion so uh, or simple harmonic motion <laughs> so if it's not doing that um, uh, uh, that is consistent with C and so C is true and then finally continuous darkness overcomes the effect of internally generated brain rhythms on serotonin level and that's exactly not true because we see during that interesting part of the curve that uh, serotonin levels continue to cycle despite uh, darkness, continuous darkness. So for 53, the answer would be C. 54, which of the following statements is most supported by the figures? So, um, most of it, HIM, uh, and it's about HIOMT activity, depends directly on the level of serotonin. You know, I would have thought that because of this, you know, uh, there's serotonin, there's HIOMT, there's this, but then again, it seems that HIOMT activity is really dependent on the darkness, on on light changing, on denervation, and the thing that confirms that HIOMT activity is uh, not necessarily a uh, directly related to this is that interesting part of figure three where HIMT activity is very high even during periods where serotonin is low even when serotonin is high <laughs> and so there's not that um, clear relationship and then uh, B uh, HIMT depends directly on the level of lighting but not nerve input well we saw that during denervation HMT activity goes wild. It goes very, very high. So yes, it does depend on nerve input as well. And then uh, HMT activity and serotonin level both depend on nerve inputs to the pineal. Definitely. Because during the area of denervation, one drops in concentration, the other one goes high in concentration. So that clearly says that they depend on nerve inputs. They depend on nerve inputs in different ways, but they do dep depend on nerve inputs. So um, 54, the answer choice would be C. And then it says uh, uh, HIMOT activity follows a pattern consistent with the conversion of serotonin to HIOMT. No, <laughs> because uh, uh, serotonin uh, is converted to melatonin under the influence of HIOMT. So n not at all that serotonin is being converted to HIOMT. So, uh, you know, th this is the catalyst or the enzyme catalyst. Okay, so, and, uh, and if you want to know more about enzymes, uh, you, can, uh, you can look in the book in, in these sections. And uh, as well, uh, for the menstrual cycle, uh, you can read about it uh, here.